Good evening, everybody, and welcome. I'd like to call to order the Lake County School Board regular school board meeting for Monday, October 9, 2017. Uh, for those of you that might be tuning in at home, I'm, we apologize for the slight delay. Uh, we had a couple of executive sessions beforehand, and um, I'm afraid we weren't able to wrap up quite in time. But uh, So thanks for bearing with us. Uh, with that, we'll begin our meeting with a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. So if you would all rise, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'll start off with a special introduction. Uh, Superintendent. So I am very pleased tonight to introduce our student representative from Eustis High School. This is Lindsay Studolf. Lindsay has been involved in the Fellowship of Christian Athletes all four years of high school and is actively involved in the Jefferson Awards Club and president this year. She is also involved in student government, personalized learning club member, key club, and has participated in volleyball, varsity track and field, and competitive cheerleading. She has been dual enrolled at Lake Sumter State College her junior and senior years and has taken AP and honors classes. She enjoys pet sitting as well as babysitting. And she has a current GPA of 4.57. We look forward to hearing from her shortly, so welcome, Lindsay. All right, thank you. Uh, the one public input card we have this evening is not specific to any of the items on the agenda. So, um, Superintendent, do you have any uh, changes, amendments, or additions, deletions to note? Um, we do not. All right, board members, anything in particular? 10.01. 10.01 to pull that one for separate consideration. All right. 8.05. And 8.05. Just for comment. All right. You got it. All right, with that, we'll go into the representation portion of, oh, no, we won't. We'll do the approval of the minutes. I recommend, recommend approval of the minutes from the school board workshop September 25th, 2017, the special school board meeting public hearing on the final budget September 25th, 2017, and regular school board meeting September 25th, 2017. All right, there's a recommendation from the superintendent. So moved. Motion by Bill and second. second by Sandy. Any questions or comments before voting? All right, seeing none, let's put it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That carries unanimously. Now for the representation portion. And the first uh, item is a resolution about a drug-free lifestyle. Uh, is uh, Dr. Weisskopf going to, oh, Sabrina Dillon Banks will present that one. Good evening, Chairman Dodd, Madam Superintendent, board members, and members of the audience. The history of Red Ribbon Week began after the kidnapping and torture and brutal murder of a drug enforcement agent, Enrique Kiki Camarera, in 1985. In the agent's hometown in California, the public outpouring of support turned into an organized community response in which citizens donned red ribbons. Then in 1988, Red Ribbon Week was recognized nationally with President Ronald and First Lady Nancy Reagan serving as the honorary chairs. Today, Red Ribbon celebration brings millions of people together to raise, raise awareness regarding the need of alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs and violence prevention early intervention and treatment services. It is the largest, most visible, visibly um, recognized prevention awareness campaign in the United States. Drug-Free Lifestyles Resolution 2017-07, designating October 23rd through the 31st of 2017 as Red Ribbon Campaign Week. Whereas alcohol and other drug abuse in this nation has reached epidemic stages, and whereas it is imperative that visible, unified prevention education efforts by community members be launched to eliminate the demand for drugs, and whereas the Lake County School Board is sponsoring the Florida Red Ribbon Campaign, offering students and citizens the opportunity to demonstrate their commitment to drug-free lifestyles, no use of illegal drugs, no use of illegal, excuse me, no lease of no abuse of legal drugs. And whereas the National Red Ribbon Campaign will be celebrated in every community in America during Red Ribbon Week, October 23rd through 31st, and whereas businesses, 
government, parents, law enforcement, media, medical, religious institutions, schools, senior citizens, service organizations, and youth will demonstrate their commitment to healthy, drug-free lifestyles by wearing and displaying red ribbons during this week-long campaign. And whereas the Lake County School Board further commits its resources to ensure the success of red ribbon campaign. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Lake County School, Bo School Board does hereby proclaim October 23rd through the 31st, 2017 as Red Ribbon Campaign Week and encourages its citizens to participate in drug prevention education activities, making a visible statement that we are strongly committed to a drug-free state. In testimony whereof, the School Board of Lake County, Florida and Superintendent have hereunto subscribed their names and have caused the official seal of the Lake County School Board to be hereunto affixed on this day, the 9th, of October 2017, and a copy of this proclamation is hereby placed in the archive of records of this board. All right, thank you very much for that introduction. Superintendent, do you have a recommendation for us? I do, I re recommend that we designate October 23rd through the 31st, 2017 as Red Ribbon Campaign Week. All right, there's a recommendation from the superintendent, Absolutely. and a motion by Bill, and a second, second by Stephanie. Mm -hmm. Any questions or comments before we vote on this one? All right, seeing none, let's put it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Unanimously declared. Thank you so much. And are you doing our next one as well? I am. All right, very good. Take it away. I want to pass the um, implementation plans that we submitted to the schools just so board you would know what activities that our schools would be participating in for National Bullying Prevention Month. The history of National, National Bullying Prevention Month is a campaign in the United States founded in 2006 by the Pacers National Bullying Prevention Center. This campaign is held during the month of October and unites communities nationwide to educate and raise awareness of bullying prevention. The National Bullying Prevention Center laid the groundwork so that National Bullying Prevention Month is a nationwide call to action educating communities as their roles in bullying prevention. National Bullying Prevention Month Resolution 2017-08, designating October 1st through the 31st, 2017 as the National Bullying Prevention Month campaign. Whereas bullying is physical, verbal, sexual, or emotional harm or intimidation intentionally directed at a person or group of people, and whereas bullying occurs in neighborhoods, playgrounds, schools, and through technology, such as the internet and cell phones, and whereas various researchers have concluded that bullying is the most common form of violence afflicted millions of American children and adolescents annually, and whereas Lake County children and adolescents are affected by bullying annually, and whereas targets of bullying are more likely to acquire physical, emotional, and learning problems, and students who are repeatedly bullied often fear such activities as riding buses, going to schools and attending community activities. And whereas children who bully are at greater risk of engaging in more serious violent behaviors. And whereas children who witness bullying often feel less secure, more feel fearful and intimidated. Now for be it resolved that the Lake County School Board proclaims October as National Bullying Prevention Month and be it further resolved that students, parents, recreation programs and community organizations be encouraged to um, engage in a variety of awareness and prevention activities designed to make our community safer for all children and adolescents. In testimony whereof, the School Board of Lake County, Florida and the Superintendent have hereunto subscribed their names and have caused the official seal of Lake County School Board to be hereunto affixed on this ninth day of December excuse me, ninth day of October 2017. A copy of this proclamation is hereby placed in the archive records of this board. All right, thank you very much. I recommend that we designate October 1st through the 31st, 2017 as National Bullying Prevention Month. All right, there's a recommendation from the superintendent. Any motions? So moved. We have a motion from Bill and a second, second from Christy. Uh, any questions or comments before voting? All right, then let's do it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Also unanimous. Thank you. Good. Well, thank you so much. Next, we'll invite uh, Carmen Cullen Bat to present the uh, district's five star award winning schools. Uh, Chairman, school board, superintendent. Um, and uh, if I could ask the superintendent to please join me to help me distribute. 
Um, school improvement and accountability legislation are built upon the active involvement of parents, guardians, business people, and other community members in an effort to improve schools in the state of Florida. The legislative intent is to return the responsibility for education to those who are closest to the students, schools, teachers, and families. The Five Star School Award was established to recognize that community involvement is vital to student success. The symbol of achievement is presented each year to those schools that have shown ev evidence of exemplary community involvement. In order to qualify for this award, a school must meet 100% of the criteria in the categories of business partnerships, family involvement, volunteers, student community service, and school advisory councils. The school must also maintain a portfolio that documents compliance. And um, 15 is the magic number tonight. And our first recipient is Mr. Um, Schechtel from Claremont Elementary. The second recipient is Mrs. Prohard from Cypress Ridge Elementary. <laughs> Mr. Frazier from Eustis Heights Elementary. Ms. Langley from um, Fruitland Park Elementary. And I wasn't sure if I saw Mrs. Williams from Grassy Lake. Yes, she's over here. Yes. Oh, okay. I'm Mr. Mrs. Schneed from Groveland Elementary. <laughs> Mrs. Dial from Imagine South Lake Charter. <laughs> Ms. Pegram and Ms. Hart from Lost Lake Elementary. Ms. Dyson and Ms. Shu from Maniola Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Burns and Ms. Urbando from Pine Ridge Elementary. <laughs> Ms. Bartberger from Round Lake Elementary. Ms. Choi from Seminole Springs Elementary. Ms. Burkhead from Sorrento Elementary. Ms. Strawn from Triangle Elementary. And Ms. Rogers from Umatilla Elementary. In all fairness, next year we're going to start with the U's and work our way back. Miss <laughs> um, Watts, or, or I'm sorry, Miss Owens has asked that um, all of the recipients go to the rotunda for a photo op real quick, please. Thank you. Uh, could we get a chance to uh, oh, congratulate sure. them first before we send them on their way? <laughs> Thank you. It'd be a, like a little parade. Yes, right out the rotunda. <laughs> we should have some Academy Award music Reach playing it. or something, huh? Reach out. Maybe. It's a very sad Congratulations. 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 
We do have one public input card this evening. It belongs to Steve Tibbetts. We'll invite, uh, doesn't it? Yes? You? No! Well, we're moving along. Yeah, yeah. It's just an efficient meeting. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, board members, Superintendent Cornegay. It's nice to be back with you. Um, few things to just share with you this morning or this evening. First of all, <clears throat> your makeup plan for Irma is wonderful. You have no idea how excited teachers are about utilizing those Wednesdays and not disrupting breaks. Uh, I've heard so many great comments about it. Reading through the various items, I just have some questions, concerns to share. Um, we're scrapping a smart table tonight, bought six years ago for $5,599. What did we do to it to destroy it in six years' time, I would ask? Um, we're hiring 169 teachers under an out-of-field category. That just seems like an awful lot of people that are teaching, that are lacking apparently some certification to do so. One of the things that I was amazing, amazed at was to see that we're adding two ELC senior site coordinators and one management person and doing that offer $26,000, gee, it doesn't seem like we're paying three people very much to do their job, or that number is wrong, or we don't expect very much from them. Regarding the progression plan, great, great changes made from the draft to what you're approving tonight. But I will bring just a couple of items up. On page 46, under alternate promotions, it says there will be no social promotions. Immediately following that, it says, in order to promote students not meeting promotion requirements, the first criteria is the number of previous retentions with careful attention to students who have been retained two or more years. In other words, that's enough. We're going to pass them on. Too bad, but it's not a social promotion. I love this one. Final grades can be changed under extraordinary circumstances regarding the health and welfare as determined by the school principal, i.e., my parents will kill me if they find out I got a D. I won't be able to get into the college I want to go to. I'll just die if my friends find out I got a D. Uh, Mr. Tibbet, a grade is a grade. One last thing, the ESC programs mentions gifted students. There is no definition anywhere of what a gifted student is. There needs to be. And I will follow up with Dr. Landry in terms of if you're going to have a program, Let's have a program because we do not have a program now and we don't even define who they are. Thank you. I appreciate again all the work you do. All right. Thank you very much. Lindsay, you 
have the honor and privilege of being our first report of the night. Uh, thank you and welcome. Thank you so much. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you so much for having me tonight. I'm Lindsay Studoff, and I'll be giving you a brief look into the happenings of student life at UCS High School's campus. Um, we just finished up a successful homecoming week themed Hollywood premiere filled with fun student festivities, such as a scavenger hunt, which the students who participated got to go all around the school to find certain things, and whoever won got free homecoming tickets and $25 Chick-fil-A gift card, which helped all the students kind of come together and have fun. And we had a parade routed through downtown Eustis, ending at the Eustis football field, an energizing pep rally acknowledging all fall sports and getting students pumped up for the football game. And the festivities came to an end at the homecoming dance. Eustis High School has a heart for its community, and the evidence is in our response to the national disasters around us. Hurricane Irma caused time away from school and jobs, damages to students' homes, and financial burden on many of the families. As president of Jefferson's Awards Club, I felt a pressing call to help with the cost of homecoming dresses for young ladies and wanted to attend the homecoming dance. Within two days, I was able to collect 73 brand new homecoming dresses and 10 gently worn shoes and accessories. This project is called Dress to Impress. Its goal is to offer free homecoming dresses, shoes, and accessories to young ladies who are not able to get one, either because of financial reasons or not having enough time to get one. This opportunity has been offered to Eustis, Leesburg, Mount Dora, and Umatilla High School. Sadly, Tavares already had their homecoming by the time I came up with this project. The Finishing Touch Boutique, downtown Eustis, has offered the facility for young ladies to try on dresses they'd like and find the perfect one. This is Jefferson's first year of doing this project, and we have all the hopes of continuing this project for years to come. The Republican and Democratic clubs joined together in response to those effects by Hurricane Harvey and contributed by collecting school supplies for Houston's ninth grade class. National Honor Society is taking in monetary donations to help Puerto Rico as well. Eustis High School also has thrived with their athletic abilities. The varsity football team is three to four, two and zero in our district, and with two more weeks of district games, the JV football team also ended 4-2. to two. The swim team did very well, and the girls finished their season undefeated. The girls' softball and weightlifting seasons have not started yet, but both teams have every intention of being undefeated again this year. Let us not leave out our pride without the music department. Our amazing band won last year in first place with the Lakeside Jazz competition and is about to head into competition this week with a Latin performance they are working very hard on. Also, Eustis High School is continuing to grow in numbers of dual enrolled students, now consisting of 38 dual enrolled students and four early admittance. I, too, am an early admittance student at Lake Sumter State College, and I'm on track to graduate high school with my AA degree. It has not been an easy road, one with stress at many times, and a sense of separation from my fellow classmates, even though I'm still involved in clubs. I'm not able to plug myself into school's activities due to demanding schedule filled with both struggles and many rewards. Thank you so much for your time. I look forward to our next meeting. All right, well, thank you. I, congratulations to you on all of those accomplishments. I think you represent Eustis High School very well. And I also think I saw your proud principal in the audience, too, yes, uh, here to cheer you on. All right, well, very great represent, uh, representative of your school. Very nice. Thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you so much. You bet. Uh, next, uh, we'll invite Carmen Cullen back one more time, this time for the Ed Foundation report. Thank you. I'd like to put an employment offer on the table for you, Lindsay. <laughs> Anybody that can raise that much money that quickly needs to be on our team. <laughs> right. um, the um, Educational Foundation has had 144 teacher visits uh, to our three Apple Mart stores, and that results in $10,800 in materials distributed to our teachers. The elementary schools were offered the remaining frozen Disney costumes, and 470 requests have come in so far for those, and that is a retail value of $35,250 from Disney. Disney also called me this week and said, hey, you need 45 music stands, and I said, hey, we sure do, and so they're going to be delivered to our warehouse tomorrow, and we'll make a determination as to what school um, has the biggest uh, need for those. We have 771 students signed up for the Renaissance uh, Fair field trip from Lake County so far. That number is normally hits around 2,500, so we still have until October 18th for that deadline. Um, the Scott Strong um, Golf Tournament is sold out, and it will be held October 20th at Mission Inn. 
Hall of Fame is October 30th, and we have recognized 10 finalists, and we'll be inducting um, five into our uh, 2017 Hall of Fame. Doug Major is doing very well, but um, we don't anticipate his return until December. And um, we were excited and very honored on Friday night to have been named the um, Tavares Chamber Charitable Organization of the Year. All right, congratulations. Thank you. Questions? All right, Lindsay, I need your telephone number. <laughs> That's right. All right, thank you very much. I know we have a couple of items pulled for separate consideration, uh, but we don't have any unfinished business tonight, so we can move into that consent agenda. All right, I recommend approval of items 8.01 to 8.04, 8.06 to 9.04, 10.02 to 10.08. All right. Uh, there's a recommendation from the superintendent. Any motion? Moved. All right, motion by Bill and a second by Sandy. Any questions or comments before we vote on those? All right, seeing none, let's put it to a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. All right. Carries unanimously 5-0. Mr. Johnson, I'm terribly sorry, but I somehow uh, skipped past your report. Did you have anything to share? <laughs> uh, nothing other than uh, I, I saw right before I left today that there was an emergency order entered by the governor. Uh, there, we'd had discussion at, the, I think, the last board meeting about the potential impact from Puerto Rico, and essentially what the governor is trying to do is for that potential emergency coming forward to allow relaxation of some policies, laws, and, and statutes um, that would slow the impact of being able to deal with that particular problem. We don't have all the details, and the Department of Education hasn't said anything that I know of yet about class size or anything of that nature, but the authority, has, I think, has been given to the emergency management folks to deal with that. And I'll send a copy of the governor's order around to everybody. All right. Well, thank you. I'm happy we, we went back to you for that one. It is a, a bit of good news. And anything in, in particular about the FTE counting window? Uh, no, they... About the what? The FTE window. Oh. Um, no, they're, they've contacted each school district and asked if your, if your expectation is that you will have an increase equal to that of 5% of your student population, and if so, then they're going to... Um, extend the FTE window. If not, then you will stay on the regular FTE schedule. And I don't anticipate that we would have that equaling 5% of our student population. Yeah, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. We did have uh, two items pulled for separate consideration. Uh, one was uh, 8.05. Uh, I guess we'll get a recommendation from the superintendent so we could bring that to the floor for discussion. I recommend approval of item 8.05, the agreement with Heartland Solutions. All right, there's a recommendation. Any motions? The, the only comment I have, and oh, I made this comment. Oh, hold on. So moved. Right. Motion by Stephanie. Second. Second by Bill. All right. Any, okay. any discussion, questions, comments about that one? All right. The only discussion I have is what I had in our meeting is uh, this is software that not only entails the county, but also out at the schools where the cafeteria managers are and that uh, we look at uh, how this is going to affect them. They already are overwhelmed with the paperwork that they have to do, and this will be something else that's added. I'm not against this. I think it's a good thing, but I, I just think we have to look at all things involved, and I, I think if you go out and individually look at these ki kitchens and watch these managers, what they have to do on a daily basis, and then now we're going to add some more work to them, which will help them in the long run, but it's the initial effect that you got to do up front. So that's only my concern. All right, I, you know, uh, Gary Dodds is not with us this evening, but um, I hate to put anybody from your staff on the spot, but is there any sort of information you might be able to, to share with us to, to address that one? So we'll invite. Well, I, I, I don't need it addressed. Oh, okay. I just wanted to make that statement that we'd be aware of that. That's, I'm not against this, and I'm not going to vote against it, but I'm just saying. He, he knows my statement. All right. He, you're aware. All right. Very good. All right. Thanks so much. <laughs> Any other questions or comments before voting on it? All right. Then seeing none, let's put it to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. That one carries unanimously. And 10.01 is the other item, uh, Superintendent. Recommend approval of item 10.01, renewal of Renaissance learning subscription. All right. Here's a recommendation from the Superintendent. Any motions? <coughs> no motions? So moved. Motion. For discussion. From okay. Stephanie. And a second by Sandy. All right. So it's on the floor for discussion. So, 
And Dr. Burns is the one that you had uh, requested to pull? Yes, I requested to pull this. Um, I think that considering our recent budget um, report, um, the fact that it costs 120000 we really need to um, really consider this piece of software. Um, <clears throat> specifically, um, this program, it for, well, I mean, I, basically this program could be replaced by a reading log, a star chart, or a book report. Um, it, one of the big problems I've had with it in the past is that it caps out and it doesn't allow um, children to read at a higher level without an override. So, and most parents don't know that they can get the, the get an over, the, um, they, they can get the librarian to override the system. So then you have a kid who is reading in third grade who's reading on a fifth grade level and they can't get fifth grade level books. Or conversely, it's good for a, a kid reading on a third grade level sometimes to read on the lower level and the system won't let them do that because it's just good for kids to be reading, period. Um, and they do bounce around and it's good for them to be picking books. And this system confines them, which um, takes away authentic reading. Um, the quizzes are shallow and the, the concept um, with young children of that they get, I know that they get percentages for their actual grades, but with young children, the percentage versus getting um, 100 points, the points versus the percentages that they get um, is confusing to them because like a, a book would be a half a point, but then they'll get an 80% on a test so they don't understand that they get a point four because that's way beyond a first grade, second grader. Um, so it's just, a, it's just an expensive way of doing a star chart to me. So um, I just think we should discuss it. All right. <laughs> I, 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 I know you're in love with it. I am. I'm not. I'm, I, so my, my only concern, and I have tons of concern with Accelerated Reader. I, I think I've made that pretty obvious to anybody that's watched board meetings. Um, my concern is that while we have people that are abusing it, we also have people that are using it correctly. And so I hesitate to pull a tool that I know has become culturally embedded in our schools, for better or for worse. Um, so I think I've come to terms with knowing what our budget is and knowing that um, our, student, our teachers are using it the way that they're using it. I would rather take the time to go into these schools and to fix the way that it's being used this year and then say if we don't see a change in the way that it's being used, then we pull the program next year. So I do see some positives, I do see negatives, and I don't know if it's something that we want to pull real quickly that it's October and we've just announced the superintendent's reading challenge and people are using that. I also know that it is a, a pretty easy tool for teachers in regards to keeping track of books that students have read, whereas if they give a book report, you don't, I mean, I, I, yeah, that's true. Ah. Well, I, I can tell you, though, my son did the star chart thing, and he was the one in charge of the stars in kindergarten, so I know kindergartners can Yeah, they can definitely do it. <laughs> I, I've experienced um, Accelerator both from a parent side and from a, a teacher side. Um, and, I, yes, there are some concerns out there. Not everybody uses it the right way. You know, when I, when I see a kid come home and, and one of their quizzes has been input as a grade or that you take the however many... Right points that they got for the, the nine weeks and convert that to some grade, I said, now wait a second here. My kid got 40 points, but he gets a B. <laughs> but this other kid gets 10 points and gets an A. How does that, you know, and so I think that boils down to misuse of the program. Uh, and I think I feel pretty confident with our superintendent and the, her staff to be able to address those sorts of um, processes to ensure that it's used properly. For me, I think my big concern at this point is how can you take away a program when the year's already started, if we're going to put an incentive in place, and I'm, I'm not opposed to thinking outside the box and looking for new ideas, uh, but I, I just can't imagine taking it away at this point. Just surprise, by the way, I know you all thought you were going to have AR this year, but it, now you don't, and we don't have anything to replace that. Uh, I, I, think, I think you'll have a lot of very frustrated teachers, um, particularly when you talk about the culture um, from these, these students. 
Now, from the depth standpoint, sure, these quizzes are shallow. I know. It's, so just, shallow. it's just some sort of accountability to show that you read the book and that you're reading more than one book in nine weeks. Yeah. Right. You know, I think right. my kids are all assigned to do some sort of book project each nine weeks, but it's on a single book. And I, I love that they're spending a lot of time being in depth with those books, but in reality, if you're a fast reader, or it doesn't take you nine weeks to read the chapter book. You know, what's going on is they're waiting until the last week of the nine right. weeks That's right. to, to do it. And, and in reality, we're trying to encourage reading all throughout that time. I'll tell you that for my daughter, this was the most spectacular incentive for her. Uh, her for fourth grade year, the teacher put in some incredible incentives in place. She, she said she never had a, a kid get 500 points in the nine weeks. That year she had two, <laughs> or, I mean 500 points over the course of the year. That year she had two kids get 500 points because, uh, you know, that, that's just, that, that's just the inspiration of using the problem, program properly. I'll tell you, she was reading every single day, every single day. Um, a lot, <laughs> and that's what we want to see. So uh, until we have another program that can generate that kind of result, uh, you know, I think I'm hesitant to, to just pull back on it altogether. Do you feel it needs to be like a, a program program? Or, or some sort of process, some sort of, I mean, I'm not saying it has to be a computer program. A program meaning? Uh, Standard operating procedure, I don't yeah, know. What, whatever you want to call it. I got you. Yeah, yeah, a yeah, tool yeah. that we can teach yeah, them to use. Whatever and, the new tool is. Yeah, until that's in place, I, 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 I I think we're going to be scrambling to come up with something and people will be like, they abandon AR to, to yeah. put stickers on a chart. Right. It, it's, yeah. I wholeheartedly support the idea that we will go in and, and talk about the proper use. And I wouldn't even say the proper, I mean, the, the program even has flaws. I just jotted this down because I was laughing that um, Twilight is a fourth grade, seventh month reading level, and Ramona Quimby, age eight, is a fifth grade, third month. <laughs> Of old text, so it doesn't. It's just pure readability. Like there's so many issues, but I, I do. I would love to see clarification and that drilled down into the schools and how they're using that program for sure. For sure, I wholeheartedly support that. Okay. And, and you know, if, if as, as you're looking at that, you can also perhaps look at the education of this to make sure that people know. Sometimes there's a book that looks like it's outside my zone of right. proximal development, and, and <laughs> therefore I would need the monitor password to go take that quiz. But that, that's an option, you know. My, my son, when I picked him up from school today, I asked him if he took his, his AR quiz. He said, no, the subject, no, the monitor password. But that's okay, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, the kids know it. They, they know that that option exists if they've been, if they've been properly taught on, you know, trained on the program. Right. Anything else? Any other comments? I think that's reasonable. Feels deep in thought over I just think it's, I think it's something that should become part of a conversation. Yeah, I, I don't think I do. the conversation needs to end, but I, I Agree. For me, I'm just hesitant to pull the plug in the middle of the year. Me too. All right. I guess we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. All right. Well, carries 5-0. Uh, discussion portion of our agenda tonight, uh, first item there is the uh, final approval of the student progression plan. I recommend <coughs> final approval of the Lake County Schools 2017-18 student progression plan policy. The matter before the board is final approval of the school board's 2017-2018 student progression plan. If there's anybody here this evening that wishes to speak to this plan, please come forward to the podium at this time. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I don't see anyone coming forward and believe it appropriate to close the public hearing. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> We have a recommendation from the superintendent. So moved. A motion by Stephanie, a second by Bill. Do we have any other uh, final questions or comments before we give final approval to this document? Right. Uh, I did want to comment the section on social promotion that you mentioned is straight out of the legislature, so feel free to send them a letter. Because <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Dear Tallahassee, <laughs> what you've given us, surprise, doesn't make a lot of sense. <laughs> All right. With that, it looks like we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Uh, that carries unanimously. And finally, uh, in the discussion portion, 11.02 is a tentative approval of a student assignment policy. I recommend tentative approval of policy 5.20 student assignment. The matter before the board is tentative approval of school board policy 5.20 student assignment. If there is anyone here this evening that wishes to speak to this particular policy, please come forward to the podium at this time. I wondered if you would. You had some thoughts on this one last go-round. Thanks for joining us again. Thank you. Um, I'm not here to complain about one little thing, because, you know, I don't normally complain. Um, but I would just like to, to send kudos to Ms. Summerlin and her staff 
and you took exactly what people were c complaining about, sorry, concerned about, um, that teachers, TAs, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, whatever, they have to follow a fear pattern, and completely disagreed with that, and I'm so happy to see on page three, item D, that they may send their kids to any school that they feel that they need to for whatever reason they need to, and I appreciate the respect that that shows all of our employees. Well done. True. You're welcome. Thanks for bringing that one up. I know you were very passionate at the beginning of uh, this and last go round of the policy. And um, when you want to be a destination district, you got to do the right thing for our employees, right? Is there anyone else that wishes to speak? Please come forward. Mr. Chairman, I don't believe there's anyone else coming forward, and it's appropriate to close the public hearing. All right, we have a recommendation from the superintendent. So moved. Motion by Sandy and a second by Bill. Any other questions or comments before we vote on this one? I just wanted to comment that I really like that we made the window longer mm -hmm. and that we added a second window because that was so needed. <laughs> so I was really happy about that. Yeah. I guess that's a kudos to the staff for living through this the first come or go around yes. and, and <laughs> taking some good notes about what we had to fix and bringing back a, a you, policy Julie. that has um, gotten a lot of praise so far. So well done. All right, looks like we're ready to vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. And that carries unanimously on tentative approval. Uh, Superintendent, I think we're ready for your report. All right. Well, I want to congratulate all of our five-star school award winners that were here tonight. That's all about that community engagement and business partner support. And I know that um, every meeting I could talk about the contributions of this tremendous community. Um, one thing that we did see this week is that um, two community organizations that I want to highlight Alaka Ina Foundation donated $1,250 to the Tavares Middle School Robotics Program, and Lowe's Home Improvement Store in Claremont provided three pavilions and six picnic tables to Eustis Heights Elementary School for their recess area. I've seen the photos, but I need to go see it in person. I hear it looks spectacular, so thank you to them um, and to all of our businesses who support our schools. I also wanted to say congratulations to Scott Fender and our transportation department. They were featured in School Bus Fleet Magazine listing of the top 100 school districts in the United States. So that's quite, quite an honor. There's over 13,000 school districts in the United States and they rank 77th based on uh, many different criteria that were all listed in there. So congratulations to the support staff and all of the bus drivers who get our students to and from school safely every day. And also, I want to um, remind you, I know Carmen mentioned it, that you do need to get your tickets for the Alumni Hall of Fame induction dinner that's coming up on October 30th, so if you have not yet, be sure and get your tickets for that. We have um, two letters of condolences that were sent, uh, one in memory of Emory C. J. R. Hickey. He's the father-in-law of Joe Hickey, who's a bookkeeper at Tavares High and grandfather of Valerie Hickey, who's a teacher at Eustis Middle, and also in memory of Peggy Durdall, who is the mother of Don Dixon, who is assistant principal at Carver Middle School. So condolences to them. All right. Thank you very much. And we'll uh, go down the row for our board member comments. Sandy, would you like to start us off tonight? I was going to wait. All right. Yeah, I, I just same thing that the superintendent talked about the the groups that came together and and helping our, our robotics and also used to science elementary. I thought that was great. Uh, also, I thought what was put into our our Lake County and also that was in the paper and daily commercial about East Ridge High School how they had honored the the military veterans and everything. That was great publicity for them. I, I felt that was very good that they did that. Uh, and, and I do get around to the schools especially in my district, and I do visit your district as well, not to try to cause confusion, but just to go and get different viewpoints all throughout the, the district as well. But uh, uh, because I, I want to be here to serve and get all the information, and whenever something is discussed here, I want to make sure I have my best information. So, and, and, and I do feel this as well. Uh, our superintendent, I made this comment here recently to an outside person talking about our board and this administration about how we are working together and people have a lot of confidence in what we're doing and trying to establish. But I said the one thing I, I like about is when I first came on, 
we didn't have meetings before the Monday night board meeting. And so we caught our directors or our supervisors with like deer in the headlights whenever we would have questions. But the superintendent established right off the bat meetings prior to our board meeting, which allowed us to present questions or things of concern and that we could get these worked out. And I appreciate that because it, it does clear a lot. It may not sound like we do a lot when we're here. It's because we've done a lot as individual board members, not as a group, individual board members with the superintendent and her group and uh, able to iron some things out. And I appreciate that. That's all I got. I, I did have something else, but I'll get it next year. <laughs> I, I also really do appreciate our meetings and all the other random times I stop in and bother somebody. Um, I appreciate that everyone will talk to me still. Um, <laughs> I, I wanted to send out a special thank you to Miss um, Miss Peterkins, who is the um, the head. Um, I guess I guess head lunch lady at um, lunch lunch manager. Yes. Thank you, lunch manager at Leesburg High School, and she was just lovely when I stopped by Leesburg High for their lunch period. Um, because there had been some talk about lunches at not Leesburg High, because Leesburg High's lunches were beautiful. Their, caf their cafeteria was wonderful, and um, I really um, enjoyed the tour she gave me. The back was great, um, and I'm a restaurant person, so I've seen plenty of uh, back of the kitchens. And um, everyone was very gracious. It was very helpful to talk to the children, discuss um, what they thought of the lunches, and you know, look at possible ways to improve, um, on, improve on our service and on our lunches. So I just appreciated the whole experience and the staff at Leesburg. They were just great. So thank you up to all of them. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Bill, do you have anything tonight? Yeah, first I'd like to, to uh, speak to Lindsay. You did an amazing job representing your school. And what great leadership to provide addresses for those that couldn't afford it. Well done. Well done. I also want to recognize uh, Dr. Wheeler. It's good to see you back again. I think I spoke to you the day before that you had your episode. I was going, oh, crap. <laughs> I might have been some cause. Um, speaking of lunches, that, that Mr. Carr and I, we visited two schools that made um, Facebook heaven. And, uh, and, <laughs> and to speak to... Um, to speak to just an incident and again recognize Mr. Carr that we when we got to South Lake there were three people down and Mr. Carr immediately sets his pad down and we started slinging pizzas we did pretty good I think so well done very well done um, in the next week or so I am going to schedule some focus groups with South Lake and with um, Lake Mineola their student government I've spoken to both administrators and get some just some general feedback um, I've got to tell you that that uh, for the most part, what I saw was identical to your experience, was good, hard, dedicated employees putting out really quality food. That's what I saw. So, uh, but it's always good to have, uh, we'll, we'll, anyway, I'll report back once I meet with those student groups. That's it. Well, kudos to you for doing that. Yeah. Um, I also wanted to congratulate Ms. Studa. Uh, thank you for representing Eustis High School and Mrs. Willis for being here to support her. Um, I attended the um, Central Florida School Board Coalition meeting this morning. Um, and I did, there was a couple of things that came up that I did want to share with you all. Um, one of the counties put on their legislative, um, legislative priorities, excuse me, um, considering an exam extension. So right now we have teachers that are teaching, um, that can't, that haven't passed their general knowledge test, their GKT. Generally, these are, these are not students that are coming, or teachers that are coming from a university or a, a teacher ed. These are our, um, different alternate certification teachers that come to teach with us and they can't pass this assessment and they only have a year in, with, in which to pass that. So we award them a temporary teaching certificate of three years. And um, the Osceola superintendent spoke about how she had to let go of 60 teachers at the end of last year because they hadn't passed the GKT. So they were going to put on theirs um, an extension of their legislative requirement for passing general knowledge exam to the length of the temporary teaching certificate because it's such a, you know, a first year teacher 
and everything they face, that it's really difficult to expect them to also pass the GKT as well and get the time to study and to do all of those things. So if we could at least grant them the time period of the teaching certificate or the temporary teaching certificate to pass that exam, that it might help with the critical teacher shortage area. So I know we've got that discussion, and Superintendent, you sent some stuff out. So I, I can tell you guys at UCF, we have a critical teacher shortage. Um, my teacher candidate numbers have gone down steadily. Um, UCF has recently reduced their satellite campuses. We had 10 regional campuses. We're down to three. So that speaks volumes at this point about the, the capacity that we have of incoming teachers. And um, anything we can do to help that I think is a, was a good idea. That was the one that they brought to the table. It was good. Um, they also had some of their lobbyists there. So I didn't know if you wanted to extend an invitation to someone from Gray Robinson to attend the next, not the next one, next one's ethics, and I think after that is December, but maybe starting in January. We had a, we had several counties that have representation from their lobbyists present, so I didn't know if we wanted to extend them an invitation to sit at the table. They did bring forward some bills of interest, and I just wanted to highlight um, three of them to you guys. There was a high school graduation requirement by Senator Hugel, who I've found to be a friend to the districts. She wants to do an additional half credit for graduation requirement for financial literacy, and that sounds fantastic. But so does um, bullying prevention month and drug-free lifestyle resolution and uh, human growth and development and Holocaust. So we, we discussed how these ideas come forward and they sound great and amazing and so these bills get passed and maybe it would be beneficial if we could see the legislative required curriculum side by side uh, with, the, with our standards. So our teachers are evaluated on teaching standards that are evaluated by the, the assessments, but then we also have, um, I think, a lot of extracurriculum legislatively delegated pieces next to that. So if we're gonna consider, and she did consider, that's one thing that was in the bill, was removing um, a half a credit from somewhere, be it an elective to kind of give and take for that. That's one piece. Maybe if they saw the big list of things that we have to do in the meantime, it might help. So I don't know what that looks like, but it was a good discussion. Um, there is a concealed weapons and firearms and multi-use facilities that has been fired, uh, filed by R Representative Comby, and it would allow firearms on school grounds by anyone with a concealed weapons permit. And that was in the House, and it has traction in the Senate with our representative, Senator Baxley. So I know some of us met with him prior to his election, and I know we have a relationship with our local delegation. So. It might be beneficial wherever you stand on this side of, this is a pretty controversial idea, but just the thought that it would be anyone with a concealed weapons permit might be a, a reason for a phone call. A legitimate concern. A legitimate concern. Thank you. Um, and I think um, the last one I wanted to mention was mandatory retention. Uh, Senator Rodriguez said he was going to remove the requirement of mandatory retention for students in third grade that don't score two or higher. So we discussed that even being on the table. So I know we all talk about how important it is to reach out to our elected officials. So I thought you guys might be interested in those. And I can I did ask for a copy, a clean copy of this one. Um, and when we get it, I'll have Natalie email it to the board so you guys can see the other ones that came up. Um, there was one other thing. Hold on. Um, there was a discussion about the influx of students that are coming shortly, um, and. I believe it was Orange County that was asking a coalition, uh, the coalition and districts to put together. They're bringing three things to the table. They're gonna talk about having no penalties at all for class size. And we know the governor had a meeting on Friday to discuss some of these things, but they were talking about what penalties would be announced for, for class size and fractions. And they were suggesting that as a district and a coalition, we discuss the possibility of no penalties for class size, seeing as how we don't know how we're gonna be impacted for that. Um, number two was a later FTE count. And we also discussed the 5% that came up that he announced if you have a 5% increase, then you could do a new recount, but we're not gonna see 5% increase and it's still unrealistic. Give, pay, give us the dollars for the students that we're gonna service. So could we get behind that? And then the last one was flexibility and accountability. So if we're ever gonna get it, this is probably the time to get it. And we, we didn't want teachers to be concerned with all of these refugees coming into their classrooms and making it for the FTE count if it comes later in November and December and then having to have those students as a part of their livelihood. So, Is there an intent to raise the allocation then for education? Because I've seen <laughs> in the past where all of a sudden the appropriation is the same and it just that means we get a recalculation and it's less. Right. Right. Just right. Five right. stays the same. Right. Have we heard what's gonna happen? That we need to send a letter about. 
Right. <laughs> right. So even like internally, I mean, even if they stop the caps or reduce the caps, I mean, are, do we have some, some internal threshold for what's okay and what's not? I mean, are we fine with 35 kids in kindergarten? You know, I mean, like, I don't think anybody's going to be that unrealistic. I don't mean, I mean for you, but what? It seems like the greatest impact we'd see is likely Sawgrass Bay, right? So, um. from, from what we're hearing, yes, I know Pastor Gonzalez. I've been in touch with him. Um, several times over the past week. He's kind of our representative. Um, he's been at the airport during the intake process and keeping a number, our, um, eyes on our numbers and helping to relate, relocate those who are interested in coming to Lake. We don't have a lot so far. I think we have about, about 20 students so far that have enrolled. Um, and they're not all at Sawgrass, but they're in the south, um, Groveland mm -hmm. and, and, and that area. All right. Okay. So... So we just wait and watch. And we do have a, uh, the United Way is, has reached out and I know Commissioner Parks has asked that we kind of look at a task force to look at all of the issues and, and have a very united front. Um, Chris Landry is gonna serve as our representative on that um, task force along with some of her staff and that meeting's coming up um, very soon. I don't remember the date off the top of my head, but um, so she'll be able to get information and kind of be our representative, being able to relay what some of our concerns and needs are as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything else? Nope. All right. Well, very good. Well, um, those um, those meetings that we have the opportunity to attend individually with you, with your staff, I think, are going to be really helpful coming forward because we have a couple of big topics that we're going to see hit our discussion agenda coming soon. One of those being legislative priorities. We're going to talk more in depth about those, uh, as well as the superintendent evaluation, um, rather than call everybody in for a separate workshop on just these two topics. We figured we could probably just put those on discussion and uh, talk it out. So if if we do our homework ahead of time, that will certainly make that discussion go much smoother. <laughs> uh, I know that we have um, uh, mentioned and heard that accreditation is coming up. There are a couple of different approaches to uh, to approach the the finale of that, if you will. Uh, sometimes the so the, the team has given us an option, haven't they? About to, either we can uh, have come together as a board for a final public meeting on that Wednesday afternoon. Uh, with the accreditation team or uh, we could allow the superintendent to uh, obtain those findings and, and then come back to us uh, in a different setting with a presentation. Is that right? That Did is I get it right. The actual report is will be delayed. It usually takes a month, two months before we receive the actual report, but they'll give us a, an overview of their findings and recommendations. It's usually about a 15 to 30 minute presentation. So board, what's your preference? Do you want to wait for the superintendent to give us the uh, the, the recap, or do you want to come together as a board? With that works for me. This for yeah, rather than us come together for 15 to 30 minutes. Okay, I thought that's the way you were going to lean, but uh, wanted to make that available if anybody wanted it. Okay, all right, so that's what we'll do on that one. Um, and then, uh, in the spirit of, of highlighting schools, um, you know, I had a chance to visit Sawgrass Bay a couple weeks ago, and there was um, something that, that still stands out to me is. Um, uh, being so refreshing and and so one of the things when I was about to conclude the visit I, I said to the principal okay anything else I got to see and she said actually yes we've been saving the best for last we need to go into the music room so we go into the music room and let me just tell you how refreshing it is to see kids actually getting some music education right there you know the, the teacher was just I mean, she was on the floor and being so involved with these kids. The kids were all uh, banging around their, their instruments, uh, doing the beats as, as she was uh, instructing. And I thought, here it is, case in point of why every, uh, why we need to fix that allocations formula. Sawgrass Bay has, well, a lot of kids, so they get a lot of enrichment teachers. And because of that, they can offer the art, they can offer the music. Uh, these are opportunities that it, it's just sad that, you know, we're, we're restrained by budgets, that we can't just put those teachers out everywhere. Uh, my hope is that I know the allocations process uh, in review is starting to, is gonna kick off. Uh, and my dream is the, to see uh, those sorts of opportunities be available to, to any kid, no matter what your, your zip code is, whether you go to a school of 600 kids or 1400, that you'll have access to those sorts of opportunities. I think that would really um, help move this district forward and, and talking about educating the, the whole child. You know, it's, it's not just about those state assessed subjects. Board members, did you have any other final comments that we overlooked? Are we ready to adjourn? All right. We are adjourned. Thank you all very much.